and we saw that it's not easy creativity while we saw some elements of it and it required new ways of looking at things finding and thinking different connections which are there and how we can put things together which are quite diverse and then experimenting with different options and ultimately then not a straight forward path many times there will be not a failure but series of failures but doing again and again and ultimately in some cases we would be succeeding we will be really creating something new essentially we see that the process is important and we need to be there are various phases which are important in the entire process of creativity and we say that there is very important thing that is preparation you need to prepare before we really start on the creative exercises that we are going to do then of course there is very important thing and that is the incubation of the idea the idea is not going to be immediately ready then after working on the idea for quite some time you might get sometimes what you call the insight and then it's not enough to just to get insight we need to validate that that is it really the right thing that we have got so essentially what we need to always do and even more important it is not just a single process that you will do there would be lots of iterations lots of cross currents going back and forth and only then you might be able to get something which is worthwhile attempting trying and might result into important area which you can work on so the first phase is the phase of preparation that means if there is something that you are working on if there is a problem or an issue which needs to be addressed you need to thoroughly prepare that you can't say that i didn't know about this you need to make extensive study the literature the survey of it and you need to understand thoroughly what you are trying to do that's the preparation phase after you do that it takes a long time because it's not answer is not straight forward a lot of people have tried that you have got certain current situation you need to go beyond that and that is where we need to incubate what they call in conventional or colloquial language i will sleep over it i will just give my time to it i will think over it while working while resting while doing anything else so that is what we call the incubation phase so as you are thinking about it there could be a time when after even despite long periods of thinking and going over it you may not get really an answer but in some cases there is a chance that you will get some excellent idea some insight which was not there earlier which you can connect and then you can come up with this that yes this is what could be the answer but that is not enough once you get the answer you need to really validate that is it really the right answer is it really a special case is it really addressing the complete problem and what really i am doing is that giving me the correct answer for this particular case or is there a general solution which i can use so these four steps of preparation incubation insight and validation are extremely important and of course we have got some very well known examples about archimedes all of you know that what was the problem he was given
is the crown really made of gold or is the that gold is mixed with some base metal that was the problem so we had to prepare about it that what really is the problem and he was thinking about it and what is the insight he got he found out that the water displacement is proportional to the weight of the body and therefore if pure gold is going to displace so much water going to displace that so was the general solution it was actually a great solution which came about by the combination of all the factors so it is not just enough saying that this could be the answer the entire cycle of preparation incubation insight and validation needs to be confirmed and then only you got the right solution question which is relevant for this then the incubation this really is the mental work what we called last time remember that you take a mental walk around the problem like the photographer takes walk across the scene or the event he which he wants to cover and it uh, includes both analysis and synthesis of the situation and continues not only when you are actually working on it but at the back of your mind you continuously are working on the situation and sometimes you seem to connect that different parts of the problem could be combined and you could get a solution so what's really important in the incubation phase is what is called the pattern recognition that can you really recognize a pattern or can you create a pattern which will really give us something which has been not so far seen or attempted and you are able to see it and very importantly those people who are creative have the ability to recognize the pattern as it is emerging not very clear but they are able to look through it and find that this is a new pattern which is there and that could be an opportunity which can take shape as you work on it so this process is not really a logical or is not a process which goes by some algorithm it's a process which is sort of a non linear a quantum shift process which sometimes one can work on it sometimes it might work but it's not a easy straightforward process very importantly it is the linking of the chunks or the association of different things which were not thought to be connected or working together which might give us the connection so it's a very important thing the pattern recognition or the creating a new pattern from the existing information then as i said you get the insight into the situation and this will give you a new idea what we thought just now the eureka moment which many people will that this is the only part of the creativity is not the case the all four phases are very important and here first phase you saw the pattern recognition and here what you are able to do is that how things are related that you are able to come up with it might be the objects processes technologies different disciplines which can come together and give us that this is the way things are related this is the way density of the material functions this is the way if one is this of water how can different things be organized so therefore this is what we call that this type of behavior is there in the creative people who are able to recognize this connection between different areas and finally of course most important the validation what's that that whatever you have come up with the new idea inside the nation is it really right is it really a one off situation is it really something which we can bank upon and use it in the other stages is it something which can give us completely new way of making like you saw some of those examples you gave into the 20 years next the clothing and all 
can it really work can you combine these different technologies so that is what we require in the validation phase so to capture the entire creative innovation process what we have here the preparation incubation insight validation without that we have got the problem finding what the problem you want to solve then the information facts about the problem then define the problem correctly and look for ideas which will solve the problem then you have to evaluate out of all the ideas which is the best one the right one and then accept that idea and take action on that to create this new business or new solution so that is the process of how do you manage to achieve creativity and innovation so most important thing is that you need to ask questions about what you are doing the inquisitive mind is really the one which can set you on the creative path and when you start this things are not very clear they are what they call fuzzy things so we need to ask about this that what should be the right questions to ask at this stage what is our long term objective what is the goal that you are going to work on and why this thing is really a great problem is it really problem worthwhile attempting worthwhile solving what you have thought or tried so far why has not worked whether it will work in a different situation if you solve the problem what is the benefits that you or the people can get from it and most importantly all of us have basic assumptions implicitly in our mind which may not be spelled out but when you are solving a problem which is not easy which has resisted solution for long time you need to clearly bring out the assumptions you are making you might be thinking that the material is magnetic while it might have properties only under certain conditions so all the assumptions that you are making they could be either right or they could be some past experience and could be a biased assumption which you need to address and remove and this we can do by doing what is called cross pollination that means you bring together techniques and disciplines which are in different areas and can you bring that together like we have got certain plants is that right certain plants on which even if there is a rain water the moment rain stops the leaf is completely dry is that right what happens there are many plants where they remain even though it is under rains they will remain dry so what it is that makes them dry so if you want to do going to develop clothing for yourself you could ask yourself the question that what it is that some plants repel water very easily and some plants remain soaked in water for long time like grass and all so then you can come up with the possible solution you can apply the plant field to the clothing field and can i get the answer it is also very important that different people are assigned different type of jobs so that they can bring their views into the situation and therefore we can get different inputs different angles for the same situation but even if you get an idea you need to be sure that the validation thing if really implemented how will it really work does it really give us the benefits in terms of cost and price and the quality that you are looking for so therefore one way to do creativity as i say it is not a straight forward logical sequential process it requires different ways of approaches and one approach is to how can we really be creative while still trying to do things in a framework in some sort of a system and there is what is called an approach called pause and notice that is don't just continuously go on working on that you can take a break you can stop what you are doing and try to find out that what's really happening 
give a different think about different something different or spend time on some other activity and again come back so that there could be a chance of looking from a different side so focus on some areas some areas you try to define topics broadly remember that when you did the looking at things we had telescopic approach and macroscopic approach remember that so you can look at things either in a very broad way or very focused way then bringing associations with different areas that's what we say practice attention escape and movement that is do work for long time take a break escape that and go out somewhere again come back there is a chance that you might able to do that so at this stage we don't say that there is something wrong or right you are trying to attempt to get some way of answering this question and best way is to implement that is experiment and see what's happening only then there is a chance of getting some benefits so you need to understand what are the elements currently the assumptions and the patterns that you are looking at very importantly you can apply some metaphors and analogies that right? if this is what's going to do what could be the metaphor can you see the whole world as a single drop okay so when arthur c clark came with the idea of communication through satellites he didn't look the world as a huge big thing but as something of a small ball which can be accessed from all across the areas so therefore we need to go into different analogies think look at things from a different perspective and apply those for our current situation and most importantly don't miss out things what normally you take for granted you need to pay attention for that so therefore try to change where are you looking for change your time change your place change the space judgments you make quick judgments or you hold them find out what is stopping you what is in the past experiences and therefore there will be some way in which you will try to bring the association and the new ideas which could as i say that there is no guarantee that you are going to get the answer but there is a way in which you can look at things and bring as many disciplines and perspectives to the problem possible there could be that some combination would be able to do the trick so therefore you need to do both these things that is look at it from a analytical point of view and also from the synthesis point of view that is analysis of course all of you know that if you want to do something you will look at it you will subject it to various tests and assessments and say that this is what it is and at the end of it this is why this contains so much material this is an alloy or whatever it is on the other side the synthesis where things are not known today so you'll be doing the visual or inspection of that you will think not in a straight forward way but you will think in a random way that is you will try to make jumps between different situations there are ideally like impulsive or not making straight forward changes but in different orders and not just looking from one point but from a mobile situation that is go out see it from different way and again look at it after a gap so these are the things which really are possibly going to give you some solution so therefore in the innovation area in the creativity area the most important part is the how do you recognize patterns and how do you establish relationships so unless we do that it's not going to be easy for us to get this done okay so let's do some exercise for this some small exercise could be very full of fun and enjoyment so let's do that i want teams of two people so and there be as far as possible okay yeah we have got two two is here can you split your teams 
just two people per team yeah can you do that can you, you come on this side some of you here how many you have got i think one person can come front okay i think can you distribute shakti and aparna give to each team yeah okay so now no one team i think you need to tell them something first and then you tell them so you you put this like this okay. and ask them to put right as many words possible when you start time mm -hmm. so when you start as many words whatever words they can write time is to possible okay and the, the which team is remaining last team yeah i think one this team can come forward here okay we are starting now the time starts now you have got 3 minutes to do the job okay the assignments are there so job is for 3 minutes and for this team half a minute to do right now what she has told you and next half minute will give you something different okay so right you have told them you have told them yes yeah okay and the last team aparna you give them this okay your time starts now 3 minutes you have to come with the answer at the end of half minute you need to tell me for this team everybody got 3 minutes with them yeah yeah let them write for half one and a half minutes yeah yeah i think time is up okay you want more time how many of you have finished the assignment you have finished very good you have finished 2 3 you have done that so i think enough time half the class has done that that means we can stop so anyway i think at the end of 9 yeah i think stop everyone please everyone please stop let's start the so what was it that you are given you are given very simple situation and you wanted to come with a solution but important point is that there was some element of finding the pattern and how the things are connected in that so basically let's take a look at this who had the number 1 assigned this thing number 1 you had number 1 you got the answer so this was a, there are three people who got this frame game that means there was something within the frame we have to make sense out of it is that right okay so what's your answer for that either get a phrase or get some sense of the what do you see here some words are written is that right letters are there do they make sense what's your answer sorry symmetry is there very good you see i e i here and then e i e excellent so you could notice that pattern there is symmetry but what more what are the letter in between these two c so does it make some sense what this could be anyone else can guess now yeah sorry loudly i c s i no it's not i c s i because there is no e in i c s i so obviously it's not e so this is an i think this is perhaps the most difficult one i would say among this three frame games what does it mean is basically in english language you get the sequences either of i e or e i in the spelling of words is that right there are many words which i got the spelling either i e or e i and what is the difference here the word c so what it means that in most of the cases the word requires i in the spelling like believe 
or relief, you can see that, or tire, T-I-E-R. So most of the words where you have this I-E pronunciation have got the I-E sequence except the letter C. If the letter C is there, then instead of I-E, you require E-I. Like three tire, is that right? T-I-E-R. But if you see any letter in English language, any word, like received or deceit, you will see that after C, it's always E-I. So the rule of English grammar or spelling is that I-E is the commonly used for all letters. But if it is a letter C, then it has to be E-I. Okay? Let us see the next one. Number two, who is number two? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that is what you need to come up with. Very good. Yeah, number two, who was that? Yeah, you got it. Very easy. Sorry? Need is the? Yeah, but something more than that. We have got now here letters which are same size and bigger size. So you got here PAL, P-A-L. You have got on top. The PAL is common in both. Yeah. So there is a PAL common in both the lines and there is need here and deed here. That means a friend in need is a friend in deed. So that's what was expected of you to get the pattern from that. What is the next one? Number three, who had it? Who was number three? Yeah, what was that? Yeah, this is very good. That, what is the equation they say? Wrong plus wrong is equal to left. That means it is not equal to right. That means two wrong do not make a right. So good one. Who was number four? Next one. Yeah. What do you, you got that? One is to four. How do you get that? Sorry? Geometry. What is that? Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, tell us, tell the class. Okay, so very good, but this is what they got, but this is what someone else did, what they do, they just rotated the triangle and then what you got here, you got actually four equal triangles, just by rotating that triangle, you now see there are one and four, so the ratio is one as to four, so you can do a job by doing exactly finding the circle, area, radius, side and find it or you can do by visual, so remember that we said by visual inspection you could try to solve the problem. So very good, 1 as to 4, you can solve that. Who was number 5? Number 5, who had that? Number 5, oh, yeah, what was that? What was that? Did you do that? What is the problem? Remove six letters to make a commonly spelled English word. What do you get? You got that? Let's do, let's start. Let's remove the letter N. We can do that. So remove the letter N. So you got this jumble of letters. Then let us remove the letter S. What happened? Then let us remove the letter A, remove I, remove P, remove L, and you get the letter free. So what was the point in this? You had in your mind perhaps, you had to remove only six letters, and not, if you remove S, S can be removed from, all the S's can be removed, or all the N can be removed. So perhaps you didn't think on those lines, otherwise you would have got the letter free from that. Who is the next one? What's the number? This is most commonly used puzzle. Yeah, you got that? No. What is required? That you connect these nine dots with four lines without lifting your pen, so that they should all be connected. It's a very commonly used psychological tool to find how people can 
think in a given situation and what is the answer? What is the answer? How do you solve this? You start from the dot here, you go across, so this is the first line, then you go into the second line. The point is that you are going beyond the 9 points, you are not distinct to the 9 points. So once you go beyond 9 points, then you can come back line number 3, line number 4. So what happens? We assume inherently that what is the assumption like we saw that in our slide that people assume what is the assumption? You can't go beyond the 9 points. So in many cases you require to stretch your envelope. That is normally people will think that I must connect the 9 dots without going into the area of the 9 dots but only when and which is not possible if you do it it can never work but only when you go beyond these 9 points that you stretch the envelope then you can perhaps reach there and go. Who was the next one? You were there yeah how many words you got previously? Yeah there how many words did you put? Fifty-five letter words, and after the in the second half, what, how many letters did you get? Thirteen. Huh? Thirteen. What? What is the problem? Can you read them out? Sorry, sorry. No, no. What? What is the letter? No, no. I let the answer first. What is the first letter you got? T N T, but T E I N T. Okay, then. Okay. Illuminati. Okay, Illuminati. Yeah. Okay. So I think let's the class know what was the problem. The problem is they got. We asked them to write any words, and they got 55 words in the first instance and second instance was that write words beginning and ending with same letters only thing should be at least five letters long the words must be at least five letters long and they got how much 13 yeah so was there any word in this that you didn't know I think you got Xerox is that right and so these are very common words, these are very simple words, example, diamond, is that right? Should have been easily possible for you to do that or second thing is that as against 55 or 52 words, you could write only 13 words here. It is not that you did not know all the words. So what is happening? Moment you put some constraint, then you try to think in a restricted way. You are not able to give your full attention to that. So each and every word is known to you, is that right? Rumor, maximum, label, everything you know, but you could not, when you are given time to do that specific task, you could not do that. What is the next one? Who is the next one? Coins, you got that? Let us see. Yeah, you can come here and bring, show it here, that is good. So the. Uh, they had three coins, so the three coins have got heads and tails, so they have to put them in such a way that there are two, you put it here so everybody can see it, yeah. Two heads on top and two tails on the bottom. Where? How do you get that? Sir. So this is two heads yeah. and one tail. It was it was in two heads. How? No restriction for the tail. So two heads? No, head. no, we said there has to be two heads and two tails on each side. The question is what? Arrange in the coin such a way that there are two heads on one side and two tails on one side. So we have got only two heads here two and heads. one tail. So where are two tails? It wasn't the only, so we thought two heads and two tails. Where are two tails? You should be all seen. I, I, I don't see anything here. But I see only head. That was the confusion of which is the other side. You should ask. If you are confused, you should ask. So anyone who wants to come with that, keep it here, keep it here, we will do that. He wants to come with the solution that there has to be 
there are three coins here you have to arrange in such a way that there are two heads and two tails that you can see so what do you do you can see it here this is a coin and this is the head which i am keeping here and this is a coin with this, the tail i am keeping here so i got one tail and one head is that right now i got one more coin which has got one head and one tail so i place this coin in a vertical way and it can remain so now you can see that on one side there are two heads and one side there are two tails is that right so what has happened you have actually gone beyond the dimension you are looking at the problem as a surface problem but you have gone to third dimension you can see that now we have got two heads on this side and two tails on this side so that was the problem which could have easily got it if you had gone not remain in the x plane but gone into the y axis who is the next one yeah next one what is the problem the glasses problem you were there yeah what is your solution glass 2 you pick up yeah and pour in the glass for you and what does happen then pick pour and put back so you get now alternately glasses filled and empty of the liquid so that's very good so what was the basically uh, understanding that you touch only one glass and are able to get that very good who is the next one making the chain yeah got it got the answer yeah what is the what is the cost you incurred can everyone see the problem just let them look at the problem what do you got you are starting with this four links you have to make a single chain but what is the constant you are applying here that you have to pay rupees 2 to cut the link and rupees 3 to close the link and you should not you connect all these 12 but should not exceed rupees 15 so what's your answer can you do that yeah but we want have close chain that is what you require would your girlfriend wear open chain she would require a close chain so what's the answer anyone else thinking about it Hmm? No, that's what they tried. They couldn't. They could not get it. So the answer is, I think, very important. What you do, like I think you will know that you. This is the you take the first chain, okay, and you remove this one link. So what is the cost for you? Two rupees, okay. Then you remove also this one. So what is the cost now? Four rupees. And what you have got now? you have got three link single links with you so with these three single link you join one two and three so what happens now you spend only four rupees to get those three links and when you join these three links you spend three into three nine rupees that is 13 rupees less than 15 so normally what happens you don't think that you want to join so you'll break and join break and join but here what is the idea that you get as many links as you require at one go and because when you break one you get actually two so that's what given you the conservation of the cost that you are going to increase what is the last one who had this very good what's your answer sorry c will tell the answer yeah what is the logic or the reasoning behind that mm -hmm. excellent very good so what you can see here that there are four people and you can eliminate first that this a cannot do anything because a is not able to see 
anything beyond the wall so obviously a has no chance of coming with the answer same will be case with the b c what can c do he or he or she can see only the front one and only d which has got chance of answering correctly when will d answer correctly if see both the people are wearing same color if both are wearing white or both are wearing black d can immediately get the answer but the point that d is not telling that makes c feel that there should be color which is opposite to the color of the hat that is in front of me very good so c can get the answer so basically the idea was to just do a simple exercise lot of fun but the what you need to see in each of this situation is how to go beyond the normal how you can stretch the envelope how you can make some sort of a jump go beyond that like the nine dot thing or the links that we had to break or sometime in your case while we know everything still you are not able to put it on the paper in the given time so that's what when you say that you need to recognize the patterns and understand the relationship between the elements which are there in the play so that's what is required when you are thinking about the creativity so i think we'll stop here just now